In transverse statical stability, we are going to study about the ability of the ship to return to upright. Well, there are few conditions and these are very important that the ship has to incline transversely by some external force and the vessel is in still water and this is very very important. I will explain later why it is important. So in transverse statical stability we discuss the transverse inclination of a ship uh, due to external force and this is called heel. Well the, these external forces could be waves let me put it here or could be wind or could be over tight moorings in the port or if this vessel is uh, altering course that time also vessel may heal. So heal is an external force. Heal is because of external force and this is transverse inclination. Suppose this is the vessel and we are looking the transverse cross section that means we are looking this cross section so this side is the starboard side and this side is the port side so exactly we are looking like this and this is healed that means it is inclined like this and whether the vessel is able to come back or not this is the study which we are going to discuss in transverse statical stability we should also note that when the ship is healed at sea by wind and waves, the situation may be different than imagine in a still water. When the ship is healed at sea by wind and waves, the situation may be different than imagine in a still water. In transverse statical stability, we are imagining the ship in a still water and momentarily at rest at some position and we are considering the forces however because of the wind and waves the situation could be different out at sea so here let's take this vessel which is floating in a still water so our water line is 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 a straight line now this g is the center of uh, gravity where total weight of the ship is uh, assumed to be acting vertically downward so I can represent it by a displacement and this weight acts vertically downward from this G. Well this is the underwater volume and the geometrical center of underwater volume is center of buoyancy and a force of buoyancy acts vertically upward through COB that is center of buoyancy. Now we are having some external force that is heel force or we can say the vessel is healed because of external factors like wind waves. So the vessel is healed like this the underwater volume is increased this way and we can see the center of buoyancy has shifted from B to B1 in this direction because the underwater volume is increased on the heel side. Say if it was port side and it was a starboard side, we see that underwater volume is increased on a starboard side. So this center of buoyancy will also shift like this. So this force of buoyancy is separated. Initially it was from center of gravity like this however now it is separated now we have a point where the center line intersect with new line of force of buoyancy and this is called meta center well if we see here a writing couple is formed or a writing lever is formed this horizontal distance gz is the writing lever. This is the horizontal distance 
from a G to new line of force of buoyancy and this is the new line of force of buoyancy which is going like this so we are having a perpendicular from G on new line of force of buoyancy let me just mark here this is 90 degree so we are having a writing couple or writing moment is formed which will try to bring the ship in a bright condition we can say this angle theta is the angle of heel. Now for sake of simplicity, let us understand this diagram. So here, this is the water line W1, L1. So we are having a center of buoyancy here. Instead of inclining the ship, I have just inclined the water line. So I am having the B1 here and we are having a perpendicular from B1. Similarly, if I have this line W2, W2, L2, this, this line, I'll have a center of buoyancy somewhere here and I can have a perpendicular like this. So we can say that the center of buoyancy moves along the arc of circle with M at center. So we can say that for small angle of heel km can be considered as constant and we can also say it that this is initial matter center. Well, the gm, this is matter centric height. Basically, this is the vertical distance between center of gravity and initial matter center. So here we can see that this one is the metacentric height vertical distance between center of gravity and initial matter center and that's why we can also say initial metacentric height or initial gm the height of matter center from keel can be denoted by km and in meter well, the value of Km increases with angle of heel. However, for a small angle of heel, the increase is very small. And we can consider Km is constant for about 15 degree of angle of heel. 